Hey, welcome to the all new Dan Does Craft channel. No longer am I a snarky middle-aged man, but I will be hot on the pulse. Hot on the pulse of wargaming and miniatures and such. Um, myself and the team will be giving you twice weekly updates on uh, wargaming news. If there isn't any news, We'll make it up, or we'll rehash something that we spoke about earlier on. Consider this your wargaming magazine on the internet, on YouTube, and I'm your host, Mr. Dan Does. We're not only going to make the bestest projects you can think of, we're also going to paint the bestest miniatures. We're going to discuss 3D printers and slap chopping. I might even take a car and turn it into a, a, a Games Workshop tank, real tank. I'll do massive things like that. 40k tank. Myself and the team will be coming at you in your face twice a week with whatever's popular so you know we know you'll like it. You're watching all new Dan Does Craft on YouTube. Just the other day I was perusing the local charity shops and I found these stacking cups for just one pound. These are for kids, I think. Kids who want to stack cups. There are eight brightly colored cups in the set and not only do they fit sleekly inside each other, they also stack pretty well as well. So I was thinking, uh, I'll make a tower. Let's make a tower. But then I was thinking, but we've got the whole modular aspect of the cups here. So let's make three towers. I could have made eight, but they would have looked crap. So I made three and I decided on these three. Need to give all this plastic a good old sand because this is the kind of plastic designed to uh, resist baby spit and shit. Uh, a nice wipe clean surface. And once they're all sand, or at least as sanded as I think they need to be, later on I find out I didn't sand them nearly enough, I glue the three individual towers together. But we're only going to concentrate on the base tower for this video. Now to start, I'm going to use one of these key rings, you know, the kind of key rings you use to label your keys. And I turn it into a doorway. It is about the right scale for 28mm. Honestly, the door could have waited because uh, this step feels like the more vital one. I'm going to place the next set of towels on top and trace a line around with a sharpie um, so I know where it ends for when I build on it. It will all make sense. Where will that line be marked? I place in cardboard strips. Um, and then I cut out a platform out of cardboard and rested that atop it and glued it into place. That way we know that it will fit, that the cups on the, the next section, the cups that were stacked on top, will actually stack on top. See, that all made perfect sense. Now I've marked another line, uh, and this is gonna be for the struts. I'm gonna make some struts. Platforms look crap when they basically levitate off the edge of a thing. I love struts, I love having struts. They look good, don't necessarily like making them. Starting with another strip of cardboard so the struts don't slide down any further than that point. Uh, I'm gonna use, uh, normally it'd be lollipop sticks, but I bought a big old pack of cake pop sticks, which are pretty much the same thing. I think they are the same thing, they're just longer. And instead of using super glue, which uh, I turn my head away from the mic there to look out the window, does that affect the sound? I think it does. I'm using hot glue instead of super glue because it gives some kind of weld marks, it will look fine, plus it's a lot easier. Look at this, I've got a big old box. I was sent a filament printer in the post. It is a Quiddy Tech Q1 Pro, I believe. Now, I don't really have any need for a filament printer. You know, I thought I'd take it uh, and then immediately regretted taking it because it is huge. 
Uh, but let's give the thing a go anyway. I'm going to be jumping back and forth between this and the actual video. I don't want to allocate minutes to this. Not that much of a corporate shill. Uh. Take it for the first time. All right. Uh, I should probably read the instructions first. Yep. Sorry about that, I need to, to do these things, you understand, as a struggling YouTube crafter. Anyway, I'll be jumping back to that uh, filament printer soon. First, we're going to take these struts, start building the scaffold underneath the, uh, the platform. Using the hot glue, we're all caught up. The, uh, the uniformness, if that's a word, really does it for me. You know, some people like feet. I like uniformness, but not uniforms. Strange. And there it is. And I know you're all thinking, that doesn't look structurally sound. Uh, you're right. I need some kind of cross beam. Uh, and I'll do that now. Thank you for your words of concern. Now this is a God hand clipper thing given to me by um, Pez from Rubicon Models. Uh, met him at Salute and they cut through these tubes like butter. He also very kindly sent me a bunch of tank kits, which I will be using in a, in a video very soon. Pez has a channel. I've got a, a link in my info to Pez's channel. Go check him out. He's a lovely guy. Now I've decided to take this build out onto the middle class streets. Yo, uh, when I say the middle class streets, I mean the back garden. And when I say the back garden, it's a very sheltered wooden hut type thing. Uh, so that there's no spiders or ants. Yo. Now this is why you never see films outdoors. Look at the overexposure there. Nobody has ever filmed anything outdoors. It's all CGI. Uh, I'm using some decorators, plasterers tape I think, uh, to place on top of the platforms to make it look like a grating. Uh, a bit of grip, a bit of grippy for your slippy shoes. But you can't see any of that so you just have to take my word for it. That's enough of the outside. Okay. Oh. No. We're going to take out the corresponding accessories from the top cup of foam and install them according to the sticker instructions on the back of the machine. Install the filament extension bracket into the extension bracket fixing block. Hmm. I don't think I've got any filament. Is this the filament? Because it doesn't look like that. Right. So I guess... I guess I'm just going to hang this... on there. Doesn't look right to me. I'll be honest with you, I'm a bit lost. Have I set this up and I can't do anything until I've got actual filament? In which case did they send me the machine with no filament? What's the point of that? That's better. Zoom out a bit. So I mean, I've got to send an email or something. I'm not buying filament. Right. Let's try and thread whatever that is into that. I must stress that all of the comedicness and ineptability of the old man trying to put the filament printer together is all for comedic purposes. Uh, Quiddy, please don't be offended. Uh, it was quite easy to put together. 
blah, 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 blah. Anyway, the tower is built. The bulk of it is built. Now it's time for the detailing. And to start said detailing, I'm going to use some cable ties. Uh, we just want to get a bit of texture on the very flat surfaces. The intention is to make these not look like stacking cups. We want to get them as far away from stacking cups, or we want them to get as far away from being separate pieces as possible. We want them to become uniform. And even when they're stacked on top of each other, I want it all to look uniform. Uniform apart, uniform together. Get that on a t-shirt. Had those little snippets of the uh, cable ties all the way around, two on each side on each cup. Uh, uniform, see? Now I'm going to add some posts on top of the platforms. Now remember when I do these scenes where it goes doop 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 this is uh, one that goes wrong and I just wanted to let you in uh, just so you can see how much of a pain in the ass it can be. I tried filming this about six or seven times and just gave up. There's your bloody pile of sticks. All right, no dub dub dubs for you. Now using hot glue again. Normally I'd use super glue, but hot glue is a lot easier. You just have to be careful and not make too much mess because it's obvious when there's too much hot glue on a thing. People see it from a mile off and say, that's hot glue, like it's a badge of shame. All the sticks are in place and I need to make a little hand row using a thin cobble strip. And then on top of the cobble strip, some more of the um, cable ties because it's got a nice texture. Plus it will marry it into the tower bit. Having similar features and patterns all over the place makes it look like a building that wasn't just built by damn monkeys. Like Donkey Kong country. Banana skin roofs. Ridiculous. It's rivet time, yo. Is... Is... That's the hole? I'm, I'm sticking it in. Oh, yep. Yeah. It's going in there. Click the plus button to start heating and setting nozzle temp. All right. Medium temp to reach the setting value. Is this going to blow up? Uh, click button for loading filament until filament come out from nozzle. It's doing something. <laughs> Hi. Um, I leveled the thing out. It auto leveled. And uh, took a while. It was quite fun to watch. I wouldn't do it every week. I mean, watch it. Um, apparently there's things on there that you can just print. It's got little things built in. So let's uh, let's have a look at those, shall we? Right on here. Now there's a buckle or something. Build bed, castle, coin catcher. That looks too big. How big is this boat? Ten grams. And it takes 18 minutes. Uh, I've got 20 grams. 20 grams. That was generous of them. 20 whole grams of filament. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have my dinner while this prints and have the lovely taste of melted plastic in my chicken curry. See you in a bit. I can only apologise. Anyway, back to the door. Going to uh, give this door a little plastic roof, uh, or an eave, if you want to call it an eave. And then on top of the eave, uh, some corrugated card. Now these are plastic tweezers. Um, I get these from my shop. They're in certain packets of sweets. And I use this as the door frame. Also, I've got this flat Meccano looking bead thing that I found in my box that I've put there to uh, imply that the roof is supported now i'm breaking out the now art stuff look up now art uh, bits on amazon there's plenty of good little bits there i mean look at these bits they are perfect for hinges uh, so i use them as hinges plus uh, the other bit is like a like a peephole the little rectangle thing is great for a peephole slot 
and there is the door with a little bit of styrene on it and a little plastic paper clip handle and with that bit done it's time to add a bit more detail to the flat panels I'm not happy with them being this boring so I've got some sugar wires which are just straight bits of wire look up sugar wires you'll find these you get them in different gauges or gouges gauzes different sizes and uh, I'm gonna make little crosses all over the thing to make it look sort of industrial like this thing had a purpose once upon a time although I'm leaving this building incredibly vague as I'm sure you'll notice there's a reason for that now if you were a 28 millimeter person you'd be thinking how do I get to the roof well obviously you go in the front door and then there is a hatch at the top though I haven't made the hatch and to make the hatch I will use a miniature base uh, with a little bit of a plastic paper clip as a handle and uh, a hinge and a few little bolts around it there you go that's how you get to the roof somebody suggests I make a ladder but let's be honest that would look a bit crap coming off the side of this thing plus it wouldn't work for the whole modularity thing now when there's another tower piece on top of the bottom tower piece you just exit through the door that's on that tower piece and then if you want to get to the roof of that piece you go through that door and then up through the hatch there's a hatch on each piece um, it's all very simple uh, almost some patronizing I don't mean to be <laughs> sorry while I've been blathering on I've missed the most enjoyable stage which is priming look at that I primed it all those gaudy colors gone which means it's time for the painting stage Painting. Painting. I've given the entire building a coat of dark brown to start with and then an overbrush with uh, uh, gun metal. And now I spent a long time thinking about a good couple of days trying to decide on a colour for this building and ended up landing on verdigris, uh, which is like a, a greeny, bluey, light, light, greeny, bluey colour. Now I haven't used this paint much and what I didn't expect was for it to take so many coats. This was about two days of painting. I'm just going to take this moment to uh, quickly say uh, consider liking, commenting and subscribing or like and subscribe as we say in these here circles. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, the video is still going. It sounds like it's ending. It's not. We're not done yet. Like and subscribe. Also sharing. Like and subscribe. -er. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Like and subscribe there. No, it doesn't work. But sharing is good. Thank you. Uh, I managed to print a boat, if you'd like to see it. Uh, here it is. What do you think? Let's see if it floats. No, but seriously, I, I did not feed the filament far enough into the hole. Now, considering I had only 20 grams of filament, that's 10 grams down the toilet. I did manage to print it with my remaining filament. Here it is. Little boat. Now, I've seen filament prints before. I know that they have the lines and the ridges and things, and you're supposed to fill them. Very strong compared to resin, obviously. Uh, and I would say this is better than a lot of the filament prints I've seen. Would have liked to have been able to experiment it with something a bit bigger, something else, something a bit more interesting. I, I, I did get in touch with Quiddy Tech uh, and said, you've only sent me 20 grams of filament. I can't make much with this. I can't really show off your product that you want me to advertise with 20 grams of filament. And they said, no, we don't send filament. Uh, and I'm not going to buy filament on the strength of this boat. So uh, I have two complaints. Thing is massive, so big, it's as big as a coffee table. Now it probably needs to be. Uh, not if you've got 20 grams of filament. What are you going to be? <laughs> uh, and the second thing is the not enough filament thing. But thanks Quiddy Tech for sending me the filament printer. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if I'll buy any more filament to be honest. 
I didn't really get a chance to try it out. Uh, but seriously, thank you. The print's nice. There you go, that's the printer plug done. Uh, on to this. There, it looks quite nice after two or three days of constant painting. Uh, I like the colour. Now I want to do some details using this little bit of masking tape here. It was cheap, this masking tape. Uh, keep that in mind. I'm going to use it and I'm going to mask off and I want to do like a stripe around the middle of each tower. But remember at the beginning of the video when I said I wish I'd sanded these things more? Well this is why. Look at that bloody thing. The amount of coats of paint I did on this thing. Now the thing is the bottom uh, cup must have sanded well. That was the one I did as an example in the video. So the paint was stuck fine. But this gets worse. Stupid bloody thing. Well, that's what you get for using cheap tape and not sanding your things properly. Now, I just decided to paint the middle ridge bit uh, off white and forget the whole stripe thing. It ends up looking better anyway. And I'm going to use this red to paint in some of the triangles, um, like this one I'm pointing to, and uh, some of the others. Also, I don't show it, but I paint the opposed triangle off white, same as the strips. I don't know why I forgot to film that. Now I was going to be pretty clean cut with the painting on this building until I saw this fabulous documentary last night. It really inspired me. Pilgrim's Gatto. The Fussy Russies. Jonathan's protest. Brown flower. <coughs> Ambitious Bolivian farm. Oak Choir, Bradford Division. So I decided to do the sponging rust technique and I got my uh, lovely assistant Beth in to help with this. Right, you can't go wrong with this. So I want you to dab a little bit of that brown paint on the corners. That's wrong! Now, of course, it wasn't wrong. She's a very good crafter, but she needs to be put in her place sometimes. She's getting a bit overly confident with her skills. She did a good job. Now, there's not much left to do. I want to add some streaking rust to this, but first I need to ruin it, or potentially ruin it, with a, a black oil wash, just to get in the gaps there, and just to grime it all up. Might as well go all in, eh, with the grime. It's fine. Anyway, while I wipe away some of this oil wash, I want to take a moment to thank my Patreons. My Patrons on my Patreon. Uh, you've all been very, very patient, very kind, very supportive. Uh, and I've got a lot of new members as well, and I'd like to give a quick thanks to the new members. Welcome. Rob Swift. Andrew Edwards. Q Horn. Mark Newid. Martin Jost. Martin Jost. Retro Randy, James Higgins, Jim Bob, and as ever always by my side, as they are literally on the side of the screen, the do better tier, the tippity top tier, you can stay there throughout the entire shout out because you've paid for it. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much to the do gooders tier. Your names will hang around just a little bit longer. 
uh, than the doer's tier. Thank you so much, doer's tier. It's just a pay grade thing. It's no nothing personal. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. I go through this list and I type this up manually every time. And I sort of look through these names and I think, I wonder who that person is. I wonder what they do. Why are they supporting me? Uh, and it, it fills me with something. Um, a good thing. 